Okay, go, go. Okay, one, two, three, four, and one. And one, two, three, three, four, and one. Hip, two, hop, three, hip, two, four, hip, and one. Hip, hip, two, uh, hop, and three, you don't stop. Four, and one. Bang, bang, two, bang, boogie, say three, up. So you just beat. Yeah, play that back. It's gonna be awful. <laughs> hey, Olena, welcome. Hello. Hello, good day. Ah, Olena, we hey. still need to set a date, right? You and me. Yes. Yes, but um, <laughs> let's do it. Okay, not now, offline. offline please. Yeah, offline. <laughs> Don't let the others know. Shh. Of course, I will be pretending that we have a secret. Yeah, we're having a, we're having a secret date. Oh, guys, I have I just uh, had eleven meetings, uh, so really happy to see you, but really <laughs> feel drunk. Okay. <laughs> oh, but is it is it like have you been drinking in those meetings? No, it's just because. Uh, yesterday I was starting from 6 p.m. I was. Okay. Today uh, just didn't have time to go and take something, find something, <laughs> have okay. have my coffee. Incredible, man! What a everybody's like working around the clock. That's the way. It... Maybe we should find a. Uh, would it make more sense to have lean coffees just during the day, like at one o'clock? Because then you have a reason to book something else instead of all those business meetings and just chat a little bit about stuff. Does that make sense, Dimitri? From time try. to time, yes. We can try, right. From time to time. Yeah, we, I mean, now we're all exhausted. We had a long day of work with a lot of back-to-back -back meetings. And then still, uh, you know, we, we need to put extra effort into this kind of material. We might as well do it during the day. Well, who knows? Or probably we were sitting and waiting just for this meeting. It depends. Mm. I don't feel uh, bad on jumping to this call. So okay. I just worry if uh, I know that at least two people are still on other meetings making their calls. Yeah. Their calls. So probably during the day they are more waking to have this chat. Okay. Hey, there's a new guy, I don't know, Vadim, I think. Vadim, uh, can you turn on your camera so I can see who you are? Yes, yes, doing that. Oh. Hello, Hi. hello, guys. Hello, hello, guys. How are you? Nice big oh, all the way from Los Angeles. Well, welcome. Yeah. From Los Angeles, you're all. Oh. <laughs> no, but I'm not. This is San Francisco, basically. Oh, so sorry. Gold, Golden, Golden Gate. <laughs> My geography is really bad. No worries, no worries. I'm from Kharkiv. Uh, I'm uh, Alena's colleague. We are working okay. at the same company. I'm okay. something like manager. <laughs> something like manager. I'm saying so because it is really something like a bi engineering manager at Media Analytics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, you better get nobody, nobody, no, nobody, nobody says to managers what they're supposed to do. <laughs> you know? Okay. That's not very transparent. True. True. But it's very safe as well, because they can never tell you you're doing a lousy job. Also true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, the good part of our work. <laughs> the good part of not being transparent. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. That's true. Okay, well, um, we've got one, two, three, four people who put in the energy, uh, well, five actually, uh, including Pascal, uh, to join this session. So. Um, why don't we just uh, discuss a couple of things? Uh, if people drop in later, then uh, they drop in later. But um, you know, whoever shows up is the right people. So I suggest to just get started. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a, a, a board for us, Dimitri? Yeah. yeah. One moment, please. I will post here in chat. And, oh yeah.
Okay, Vadim, Lydia, Yulia, mm -hmm. uh, do you know how it works? I don't, but since it's easy. So today's topic is how to fix recurrent team problems. You can type here uh, like a lot of uh, your questions related to the topic and then we will vote for them and discuss uh, each topic for about from 10 to 7 minutes. But are we, so is the subject really um, how to solve those problems or are we going to just put in, re I thought the idea was to identify or to come up with recurring team problems that we all have and then uh, when there's a recurring team problem, somebody puts in there, uh, uh, people don't want to have retrospectives. I'm just saying something, right? Then, uh, and everybody votes for that. Then we're going to talk about that kind of specific, specific problem and, and see how we can possibly maybe come with ideas to solve it. Is that a good format? Because otherwise, I, if the way you put it, Dimitri, I would not know what I need to put on those cards. But if you, if you would ask me, invite me to put recurring problems that I have with my teams, then I know what to put on the cards. Okay. We are going to solve this issue, to how to fix this issue. So probably let's, let's ex explain what the problem do we have uh, with the team yeah. and how we, and then we, we can discuss uh, how we can fix them. And what, yes. What, what, what so, 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 we're looking, so we're looking for the most annoying and or recurring problems that we have with our teams. Okay. Okay. Where's the music, Dimitri? <laughs> uh, sorry. Music, music, music. Musician is an app that teaches you how to play musical instruments. Basically, a digital music teacher. So while we are all still thinking about problems, I wanted to introduce uh, Pascal. Pascal is a friend of mine. Uh, you can see him in one of those chat windows. And um, we work together on a couple of assignments. And uh, he's also from the Netherlands. He lives uh, like 70 kilometers away from me. 
And um, uh, I asked him, hey, do you feel like joining one of these lean coffees? Uh, and um, I don't know, maybe there's, it's just an experiment. He said, yeah, I'll join, see what happens. Maybe he will also be able to answer one or two questions uh, from a coaching perspective or from experience that he has. Now, I'm more like the, I used to do development, but that was a long, long time ago. And I really, really don't want to be seen as a developer anymore. Um, but Pascal is very much hands-on with um, uh, technical stuff. Uh, actually, he is, I don't know what year, world champion testing. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. He's a, he's a world champion of testing. Look at that. Wow. He's, he's, he's wow. got a prize. Cool. It's a, uh, I can't see him, but no. well, where's my answer? Yeah, so all about test automation and testing and uh, I don't know, all that, that kind of stuff. That's his expertise. Are we ready to start voting a little bit? One more, please. Yep. One sec, somebody at the door. Can, can I start voting? Uh, one, one moment, please. Um, mm. It's not honest. You're the moderator, so you're just putting in all of your own questions. <laughs> okay, let's vote, guys. Everyone <laughs> has only three votes, and please, uh, let's, let's vote. Uh, who, who put that one in? Developers are used to talk using technical language and waiting understanding. Mm -hmm. That's me. What, what do you mean? What do you mean by waiting understanding? That's not the whole um, topic. Understanding of technical stuff from the Scrum Master and Product Owner. Ah, they expect Scrum Masters to, and, and Product Owners to understand all the technical mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Dimitri, can I have one of your votes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I already used all of my <laughs> votes. Uh, Do we need an extra vote? No, no, no. Let's keep it honest. As you wish. Okay, Vadim, one vote left. Yeah. Okay, so let's start and to, voila. to discuss. You want to build trust, but we don't want to spend time for your stupid games. Um, interesting, guys. Well, let's discuss it for about like... Uh, before we start discussing this one, um just just put in 10 minutes because it's not going to be finished very fast i think i voted for this one as well and you know why because this is really one of the problems that i have difficulties with and i don't know how to fix it so i'm really curious to hear about your backgrounds and your experiences mm -hmm. so maybe we together we can come up with good ideas all right just click the 10 man let's go 10 minutes yeah okay oh, so who put it in there? Who, whose question is it? Yeah, that was mine also. Uh, so now we are building a new team. 
It's a distributed team, uh, part of developers in Kharkiv, part in um, Berlin. Uh, yeah, and they've never worked together. And um, uh, especially, so uh, I'm a um, Scrum Master. Um, oh, it's uh, hard to explain. So uh, the part who um, who's from Kharkiv, uh, it was a former team and I was a Scrum Master there. So I know that the guys and I talk to them really often. Uh, so they uh, um, really worry how to work with these guys. We don't know them. Uh, we even uh, cannot understand what they're saying. Um, yeah, and so on, so on. And um, we don't know the expertise. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, when I'm planning some team building activities, uh, for example, um, I used this uh, personal map um, to get to know each other more, so yeah, so find them some common gr ground. Uh, so they started to <laughs> complain, oh no, we won't uh, already start working, it's uh, your stupid games and uh, um, nothing useful there. Uh, yeah, so Okay, so, so we need to what, what we need to know to understand your problem a little bit better because I understand that there's one team that you've worked with they know you they don't complain like this <clears throat> then there's the other team who's in a different location am I right uh, so yeah the thing is that part uh, who know me <laughs> they're still complaining <laughs> they're, they're also complaining yes okay. <laughs> so everybody is complaining um, I would say even that part, uh, they are kind of more okay with that. Okay, we need to do it. Okay, let's do it. But um, guys in Kharkiv, they <laughs> so they did it in the end. Uh, everything's fine and uh, they kind of enjoyed this uh, um, game or activity. Uh, but still, every time they are complaining uh, in such cases and uh, that's just uh, annoying me and uh, uh, I feel like every time I need to prove that I'm doing something, not just because uh, I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> just so is there, is it, fun, 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 but uh, it's for purpose, yeah. So I, I yes, need... yes. So there's many people voted for this item. Okay. So uh, people mm -hmm. who voted for this item, could you explain a little bit? Do you, do you anybody who voted? Do you relate to this problem, or uh, were you like me, uh, wanting to have the answer to the, or the solution to this problem? Can anybody elaborate on why they voted for this topic? If I don't remember how, how to check. Well, do you, can you relate to the problem, Elena? Do you want to? <laughs> Who cares what you want? No, I liked more than three topics. That's why I probably hit ah. here. But I understand that this problem may exist and also go through something similar from time to time. OK. Uh, should I give my feedback on it, or? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah. I just want to tell you, Julia, don't give up. You are on on the light side of of everything. Uh, it's it's just about first people don't feel the value you try to bring to them, and probably you need to individually uh, either talk or do it in, in a not straightforward way, but define through the words they are talking to you, what pain they have that is connected with your games. Maybe it's not the games themselves, but maybe they feel awkward or whatever they may feel. I have so many opposite meanings or me, opinions and feedback on the same activity the same game for example was played with uh, four five six groups of people and they were different uh, mm -hmm. games different outcomes and my ex experience i got six different experiences so now i don't believe in in people's opinion anymore it's just the concentration of 
of the factors that happened during this moment with this group. Um, I believe in be, names. So, mm -hmm. so, so you've got all these six groups that have different uh, uh, experiences with games, right? Some people like it, some people don't. Mm -hmm. But might it not be because we're talking mostly about developers uh, and if they're not used to uh, gamification, so playing games with in a certain case, purpose. In my games, in my case, they were all developers, six yeah. different teams. So they're developers. Now, de developers is a sp special kind of person. Okay, they're mostly not very. They're not the guy, kind of guys who jump on the dance floor and go like, right? They're 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 typical kind of person. So maybe that that doesn't help in uh, getting them into enjoying games. Of course, but it, again, I don't believe that they uh, are honest in giving this feedback. They okay. uh, think th that they uh, bring more value by implementing Jira tickets. Okay, let them do this work. Maybe the concentration of game should be less, but uh, don't give up. That's all the thing. Then, then, then we are failing as Scrum Masters to clarify and to make them see the value of those games. Um, well, somebody else it, can comment on that too. I'm just provoking here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I can say, so what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to really explain why are we doing these things. Um, so in the details with some metaphors. So um, yeah not just we will play but uh, we are doing it uh, for the sake of this this and that um, and yeah as i said in the end it works <laughs> um, so i'm trying to um, to make it more explicit i would say so I'm saying honestly that we are building trust now and for this <laughs> we are doing this, this and that. This is important because yeah, so that's a fundamental thing for building new team. Okay. And it's all so trying it's, it's, the question the question guys let yeah. me ask the question is uh, um are you really interested in building trust? That is what I want to understand. If they are interested in building trust, it doesn't matter for them, I believe, uh, what tool is used for building that trust. And uh, if you say them that my game, my stupid games, is the tools for building the trust, they probably uh, will believe you. But if they are, as Lena said, if they are, they are interested only in, uh, in working on Jura tickets, then say them that my stupid games is a great opportunity and a great tool for you to show you how to work on this tickets more pro proactive, more productive, and um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, um, what what is your answer to that? Do you think they they don't care about trust? I think they care. So at least in my case, in this last case. So they really care. So they really worry how to work with, with that guys uh, who are actually from India. And it's uh, really hard, hard to understand. Uh, we are so different and we have different cultures and so on and uh, kind of different values. Uh, uh, so yeah. For them, it, that's important. They uh, they are working in a product company, so, so that's not some outsourced company. Uh, they are really passionate about product ownership and uh, some team achievements. Uh, so for them, that's important. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. They probably think that uh, trust is is uh, appearing kind of. So we have trust. <laughs> Let's go and work. So is there is there an opportunity because doing a game online because these guys are in India, you're saying, so they're remote. Um, that's, no, that's all like, remote. <laughs> so is there an opportunity to physically meet uh, when Corona is over? Because um, that's the best way, right, to build trust. If the physically. company will survive. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
Guys, it's time to vote. Uh -huh. Are we going to extend our time to discuss this topic or are we, are we going to end this topic? So please, please vote. Okay, so... Somebody's doing a strategic voting, waiting till the last one, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, how about three minutes? Yeah, okay. okay. I think I think Vadim made a very good remark there, but do they really care about trust? I mean, if they don't care about trust, then whatever tool you're using is going to be of lower importance, right? <clears throat> If you can travel, then travel. I think that's a good idea to physically meet and then build trust. Um, I'm, I got some kind of remark is, um, how do you uh, play those games? Uh, when you play a game and you play the game by only playing the game, <coughs> it makes no sense for them. And therefore, they don't like you because they spend time playing cards or whatever, doing chess or whatever simulation. Um, my uh, learning from uh, is that I'm a big fan of serious games and especially in the debrief of the game, there is where the value is. So normally when I play a game, said that we play a game around 10 minutes or 50 minutes, I spend around 50 to 20 minutes on debriefing that game. If the debrief consists of what have you observed, what have you seen, what kind of patterns, etc. But also how these these patterns connect to your daily life. How can we use them and how can we solve these patterns or uh, break these patterns? If you don't do a good debrief, it makes no sense for them to do the game at all because we play poker. Great. I do it at home also. Why I could even implement feature X with real cool code. So when you don't have the debrief after the game, it fundamentally lost its value. Yeah, because the learning is in the debrief. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's when the things come together, right? Oh, that's why yes. we're playing this game. Those, yes. That's what the insights are. Yeah. So if you, a very simple example, penny game. And so we flip the coins and everybody knows the penny game. It's a flow game on how Mm, yeah, I know. Okay, so if you debrief the game, is it, it's about the flow, that's it. Mm. No, then there's, no like, uh, no. there's no learning. True. So you need to elaborate on what's, the, what's in it for me, how can I connect it to real life, and from that point on, it makes sense to do them. And then you said, and I try to not use the words games or serious workshops. Workshop. Or workshop or experiment, don't use the word games. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it works, really works, yeah. When you are when you don't uh don't tell that we are going to play in games, but uh, let's just experiment for about um one or two hours. So yes, a small experiment, please. Yeah. Please trust me. Yeah, let's see. That's the invite that you normally need for a game. A serious game consists of the boundaries, the invite, the game, the goal, the rules, and the debrief. So. There's one last remark I want to make during the voting, Julia, and that is uh, maybe trust is uh, one level too high. Maybe you're 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 forgetting because they're in, in people remote and from a different culture. That's what I heard you say. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first thing you need to do uh, before you can move to talking about trust is to do a culture thing, a culture workshop, where everybody talks about what their values are, what they think is important, and then you from your side can bring into the discussion that trust is very important. And they might say, "Hey, mm -hmm. in our culture." Um, being with the family is most important or whatever and that's I mean that's maybe a good start mm -hmm. instead of already going to do trust thing right because that's one 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 step further the way I see it that's a valid point but <laughs> in our case uh, we have 
reduce the working time and it's so hard to get them together <laughs> so we are kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. super limited in in time and that's why yeah Maybe but that's that's the choice of the company right we cannot change that i mean that's horrible mm -hmm. it's a bad choice basically yeah yeah so that's the problem that's a, on the one side uh, we want to build a really good team and uh, on the other side we don't have much time for this and uh, guys really would like to start uh, working yeah but <laughs> not doing all the ceremonies so yeah need to improvise but yeah really when it feedback about this uh, culture workshop and uh, also about debrief also super big thank you uh, I, I feel that that's something that I need to, uh, uh, to be more careful with. Okay, good. Debrief is really difficult to do it good. Yep, <laughs> I would say that's the most difficult part. Yeah. Well, to me, it always feels like then uh, if it feels like uh, you're going to do a play or it's a show, and then the debrief has to like make everything come together to go like bam in their face, and that's when it becomes successful, right? That that's the whole build up. So yeah, Pascal is right about that. So everybody finished their voting? Not everybody, we, uh, but... I already voted. Okay. In discussion. Okay. Uh, the next item to discuss uh, it's about uh, what uh, actually it's it's my topic uh, i often see that uh, team are using like uh, small waterfalls in their sprints when the teams uh, at the beginning of the sprint they are starting coding and then uh, then uh, they are testing and then we are bug fixing and uh, it's horrible to see about it. Why? Why is what's the problem with working like this? Uh, because they used to to use this approach when developers are coding and then testers are uh, testing the, this code and after that we will fix bugs and voila, sprint uh, will end and what we get it's uh, that we uh, we already test tested. I don't hear a problem. I mean, the software is done. Um, the problem here is that the team um, um, the team are not so collaborative uh, as uh, as I am expecting from them because it it looks yeah. like uh, just. We are coding. It's my part of your work, and then I will give the, my code. Wait, to wait, the can test. you start? Can you start the timer? Because we're discussing it already. <laughs> You're just buying time. It was your topic, okay? Um, so a lot of people voted for this. Uh, I, I noticed, Dimitri. Start the time. Yeah. Start. Click. I noticed that you were saying uh, when I asked, "I don't hear a problem," or I, I pointed out, "I don't hear a problem." Problem, and you, you were saying something about. What you think is good? You know, the, prob bad? the problem is uh, here is that uh, team is never complete all items that uh, they took into screen ah. because we are not focused on achieving our goals. We are focused on how to li like a piece of code, and then we will test it, and then if we will uh, like. Uh, finish our uh, bug fixing, then we will get something. But uh, we are not focused on delivering um, like some value to our customers. Okay. Okay. I got a little remark here. Um, what I often experience is that why you like your job. And I know developers who's really enthusiastic about beautiful code. So they tend to make beautiful code and they literally don't care what kind of functionality they deliver. I know developers who like to make impacts with their customers. 
it's just another one. And I see developers who also test oriented. They say, everything I work, I know is works solid, does what it does. Uh, I see customers liking it. So seeing the whole picture. In this case, what kind of developer you're talking about? Um, I'm talking about the first probably. They just love to write code. Okay. Okay, that makes more concrete for me to understand the problem. Yeah, and they're they're developers, and they want to develop. Um, so it's a bit, it's about collaboration, like you said. Yeah, it's about collaboration, and uh, I'm always trying to. Um, to make an environment and to change the system that, hey guys, uh, when we when you are starting to to write some code, please ask uh, testers to attend you, to join you, and to develop some test cases and uh, think about different uh, like affected areas, uh, about different things that will that will help you as a team to achieve something valuable. So please yes. work with your testers as soon as possible. Please explain them, please collaborate, and uh, let's manage the system. Let's, at the beginning of the sprint, actually on the sprint planning, let's decide who is going to test this piece of code and who is going to write this piece of code and please, um, please collaborate more. And but that's, uh, not, that's, not, that's not a very, I mean, now you're going to put tasks on people in the planning. Uh, sometimes yes, I, I uh, yeah, I, uh, I see, and I'm I know that uh, it um, like uh, uh, doesn't look like so we have like self-organizing team, but um, okay. sometimes I I think that it's the first step to self-organizing team, uh, okay. so like. Um, to hide concept, the first would, time I, would, I need to teach team how to collaborate, how to work together on it. And yeah, then, true. And and the way the, the way sorry to interrupt, but uh, uh, the reason why I'm interrupting is because I don't think you're going to achieve self-organization by assigning tasks as a scrum master to team members. I think that that creates the opposite. That creates team members that wait for the scrum master to, to tell them what to do. Um, the other way around, uh -huh. uh, it would make more sense for me if you would look at the backlog. What does the backlog look like? Can you create a backlog that forces the people to collaborate? Um. I need to try it and I need to think about it. I don't think like from this point of view. Um, because what I did once with a team that had the same problem, uh, I, I first made an agreement with the product owner that I, that I was free to, exper to experiment. Yeah, because I need to have buy-in because I was really going to do a very bold experiment. And the product owner say, yeah, do whatever you want because uh, I also think that we're not collaborating and there's more potential. and I, don't know what to do. <clears throat> so I only took one product backlog item from the product backlog and put it into the sprint. One item for a two-week sprint. Everybody went crazy. So what am I going to do? I'm going to sit and wait here all the time. First finish one task and then pick up the next. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, you've got nothing to do. Well. Nobody's going to sit on his hands for three days. People are going to move and do something, whatever it is. They're going to do something. They're going to start talking to each other. They're going to sit and watch how the other people work. They're going to talk about the work. They're going to do things. It's a start. Yeah, Next, yeah, and then when they're really done, having one task, one user story, completely done, tested, verified, whatever, and after that, we pick the next one item. Okay, give and take, maybe two items, <laughs> really no more. Yeah. Um, actually, um, I was uh, I'm with another approach, like uh, using a mobbing programming or swarming when 
uh, all team members working like in one task in one one time. So yep. it's, uh, so we are experimenting with the, with the one small team with it. It shows us great uh, like achievements. My programming is excellent, but uh, I don't have experience in doing that as a daily routine. I did have an experiment with uh, doing it just one day of a sprint uh, to get the people to do my programming. Um, I think I uh, published an article about that as well on how I did it with very much detail uh, on, on how I run the day. So maybe you can look into that. But my programming is an excellent way to, to get people to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like a sound. It works. Okay, guys, we'll time up. Let's just decide. Are we going to extend our time or let's end? Please vote. Um, it's 10 to 7, and there are still, we only did two items. So everybody vote end, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, done. The next topic is. Um, uh, end of sprint. Uh, and uh, so I don't know who, who put I, this ticket in, but uh, the person who, who made this item, maybe could you explain, just tell us which meetings you already uh, all have on the um, and why is it exhaustive? Yeah, so we, how, which meetings are that that you have? Of course, there's a sprint review, sprint retrospective. Is that it? Or yes, do you I have can more? explain. Yeah, uh, they are sprint review, no. They are sprint respective, sprint review, and planning. On one day? Yep. Okay. And then uh, do you do a lot of refinements? Which means if you do a lot of refinements, then the planning can be very short. If you don't do a lot of refinements, then your planning is probably done. Yeah, we do enough refinements. Uh, uh, at the same time, there are from thirty to ten percent of tasks that can be added uh, in the last moment. So okay. on the planning, we uh, we really spend time for some refinement, but the, this time is not a big a big time. It's not a lot of time when, when we refine. So what is the problem with the sprint review? Uh, one and a half hour or, or two hours, sprint retrospective, one and a half hours, three and a half hours, lunch, sprint planning, four hours done. What's the problem with that? People don't like this uh, structure. They don't see value. What, what they don't like? They don't like to be present on the meetings where uh they don't do the work they like oh, coding. they w yeah wh where they need to talk need to ask answer questions that they don't uh, how to say they understand the question but they don't want to be in this conversation so oh, oh. it's like but uh, but but, but th th this doesn't make sense to me i mean if we ask a, a person uh, to build this some build me build me a house and how can we without having a conversation agree on what the house will be like before oh. you start building it oh and they don't feel themselves as owners of anything ah uh, but okay i admit we have this prob problem and uh, potentially having all this meeting in a row and having them in a productive way uh, may bring me to the moment when uh, people start feeling that they own, they have chance to influence something. Uh, and uh, I just can't, uh, if I know that they are not happy, I can't ignore this. I need to uh, apply something that can, then that can change their can opinion. Me, can you give them some insights about what they don't like? Because I've seen people say, hey, it's way too long. I spent two hours on something that I don't see the value. So it is the time versus the value. Or I've seen that it's a too, man, too much a one-man show. Somebody who's shouting everything and then we are allowed to respond to it, 
but it will be just being ignored. So what if you say, he doesn't care, so we continue, and therefore I don't like it. Um, there's so many reasons that could be why this is dreadful, but can you give some more insights what the people don't like? I, I know they don't like speak English. They don't like to speak at all because they are developers who are not uh, who earn money not for speaking but for uh, the, making their brains work they don't believe that uh, my role is very valuable because their role is superior Th this is coming from how what person they are yeah but also how they uh, uh, feel connected to the inter to the high degree that could be to say if the people they um, let me rephrase that. Are they willing to talk in their own language with developers about the product? They like it or they don't like it? The product. The product about, let's say, two colleagues with this on speaking whatever language they like mm -hmm. on the product. So uh, should we implement this with this feature, etc.? If they like that, but they don't like to speak to when there are managers inside my sprint review or I have to do it now in English while I'm not so good at English. So it makes me feel uh, scary. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So there's exactly what you describe. Yeah. So then, so then could you have your sessions in Ukrainian or Russian? Is that an option? Just retrospect because that's the only thing I, I, I managed to change just because otherwise it was very boring retrospective. But, More boring but, than it okay. is. Okay, so I can, I can understand that sprint review with stakeholders. You're from an American company. That's not going to work in, in Russian. Um, but um, retrospective school, take that off. And then there's planning. Planning can be in Ukrainian or Russian. No, no, no. Our product owners are from their side, from American side. Okay. I think it's, it's, uh, it's if they when there's a, something broken in the, let's say, the feedback system. So that means people are not willing to speak up while they should do, but do of the language problem. They tend to, okay, let's, I, I don't kind of tell it because otherwise I get questions again and I don't like it. So I just follow my orders. So I would, um, I'm just thinking what I do, because you want to change that circle, the system behavior of you should promote speaking, or you said, um, what I will do is tell the product owner maybe to try to learn some Ukraine. If, yeah, and, and what if, I mean, language is, is really not, it's 2020. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. There's so many, why, why don't you just, simultaneous translation why don't you let them do their stuff in their own language while there is somebody else that you can do it with a phone or, or whatever maybe is that an option to try to give the, the, the safety of the of the local language it's just one of the trade-offs that these guys have because they want to buy cheap in ukraine right these americans so then they would have to get used to or maybe there's somebody in the team or in the company like you but then somebody else who speaks fluently english that could just, after they did their thing in Ukrainian, then just go, oh, but, you know, do the translation part. I mean, is that an option? That's not what our company is uh, moving to, not where we are moving to. We but, want our no. people to be fluent and have extended soft skills, not vice versa. But, but, but the funny thing is, the funny thing is, there's two things in this, in this conversation that struck me. And it is one, you have an American company that hires people in, a, a, let's say, basically Russian-speaking country, and they demand of the people to speak fluently English, then that should be an entry criteria for everybody that comes to work at your company, fluent in English. If not, you cannot join, because otherwise you will not understand the communication that we have, because the, the main language in our company is English, right? So that would be one thing that the company could take care of, make sure that people that work there speak English. The second thing, uh, 
I heard about, uh, I'm a developer, I want my money for my brain power and my development skills and for nothing else. That's also HR, hiring people. So um, it would make sense to hire people who have a broader mindset and who know that they're hired for delivering value and not for their coding skills per se. But of course you are already, you have these people already. So this is a solution that could only, if you can change that chip, it will start working in a couple of years from now when the hiring procedures are different and all that. And for the people that you have now, um, I don't know, very difficult. I want to make a little uh, uh, statement. Developers are not for coding. Developers are there for making customers, for solving problems with customers uh, uh, that customers have. So I don't care if you write one line of code, two lines, 200 or nothing, that's also fine. So the, um, uh, I like uh, to challenge product owners so validating your assumptions, you don't need always code for that. So you can also be a very good developer if you figure out a solution and tell somebody else the solution and the guy says, hey, I didn't expect this to pop up. And then I that you learn already, well, what I want is not the right solution. Maybe we need to think again. So development is not about coding per se. Yeah, I can agree with that. Uh, Olena, you also said uh, you were doing some refinements. Refinements is also a problem then with the language, I suppose. I also split them. I give them the comfortable environment to chat with each other and brainstorm their ideas locally. And we, we have so many refinements and still within the time box. So what, what do you I, mean, what time box? It's no more than four hours per two week sprint. No, that's not true. Refinements take up 10% of your sprint. They don't, they're not time boxed. So what I'm saying is, um, uh, refinements is, a, is a refinement is a continuous activity that goes on during the sprint. And what you need to achieve is to have so much work completely understood by the team just before the new sprint starts. So you need to refine at least one sprint backlog during the current sprint for the next sprint. And that might take five minutes or it might take ten, two days, right? It depends on how much time is to be invested to understand the problem. You cannot time box that, impossible. Working on that, we are in that we have lack of requirements until the, end, the last day of the sprint. That's the point. Okay, well then but it takes Working on that, continuously working. So the idea is to make at least uh, planning less painful for them <laughs> during this day. Okay. I got to, before I need to go, um, uh, I got to until seven, but uh, there's some remarks I want to give. The way how to refine can also be a very big changer on how they perceive refine. So um, I will continue. The, the, what I personally like is for example, uh, collaborate with impact mapping or uh, value stream analysis or story map. So people are working on the problem what the customers experience. Another thing is that you could do something like example mapping. It's a technique on who's way more collaborative on working on how the things should work. Then I'm proactive, everybody's proactive on refining. And they don't start complaining because the most boring stuff what you ever can do is let somebody sit behind the touch uh, keyboard, watch Jira or TFS or whatever freaking system you have and sitting how he's typing all the stories. With that element in place, you're doomed to be, you're, you're being doomed. People pay a lot of money to for TV and commercials to make something beautiful and you're not gonna spend four hours watching a TV screen with Jira on it or any issue system. So also the, how do you perceive the, uh, how you should work form or you, how do you, what kind of practices you use 
for refinement could be a very game changer. Okay, uh, agree with you. Agree. Make it more interactive. Yeah, I, I have the same experience, Pascal, uh, where people are really uh, completely wasted after those planning or refinement meetings, opposed to standing in front of a wall, if that's possible at all, or, or using a digital board if really needed, where people start putting in their ideas and, and developers let them talk together about how they can solve things, get them to stand up and do something in front of a wall. And then after a refinement to see this whole series of, of pictures on the wall of the things that they've you know come up with, as those refinements are not exhausting at all. They're mm -hmm. like a little holiday away from work. <laughs> yeah. Good point, thank you. Yeah. And with, when you want to start with these kind of techniques, uh, always start with something that is somebody can imagine. So, and then when it's okay, let's build this feature. Okay, so there's just one thing on the product backlog. Uh, um, make it easy for customers to report. What do you mean with make it easy? And then you can elaborate more on then you, there's no solution or whatever it should be in. Then developers that ask, hey, I can create my own solution. Okay. Now they're in yeah. there. Yes. Stick to the problem. Don't go into the solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Solution space. Yeah. True. That's it. Okay. Thank All right, you. guys. I have time for one last one. Um, but I actually uh, at quarter past seven. I need to go as well. Me too. I got two more minutes. <laughs> okay. Quickly. End Quickly. It. Next one. Not asking for help. Um, so it's the same. Uh, people don't want to ask for help. It's again mine. Mm. Mm. Um, people looks like they are self-confident and don't want to uh, ask for help and they don't even feel when this is needed. Uh, they fail on delivering stuff on time and uh, we uh, investigated on Retra, they look, looks like agree with everything and then they again getting stubborn, not asking for help. What, pr how, to, how to visualize this uh, big fail of them? I can do it individually, but I don't know, I don't want to be rude saying that uh, it's not your game, it's, pre, it's team's game, game, but it's exactly what they are doing. They are playing like individual players mm -hmm. with all uh, and with all successful side and fails. And it, it's not, I would not stressful. Wait a minute, Pascal, wait a minute, wait a second. I want to know who, who, who else has this problem or recognizes this problem because people voted for it. No? Uh, you did? Okay, Vadim yep. did. Yep. Sometimes I have <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, Pascal? Yeah, the, um, what I've tried once is, uh, it was, worked pretty okay, is I switched it the other way around. I said, okay, whenever you're, we think the task should be so small that every day you could finish something. When you did not finish, somebody else would, who just finished his job, would help you. So the first one who's picked up another one, if the task is longer in progress than a day, somebody else would help you or a half day, whatever you figure out. So you, um, it's, it's a simple rule that you could help the team to start collaborating and you don't have to ask for help. You just say, oh, well, I didn't ask for help, but while you're now working with me, I can tell you how it works. So okay, that's a nice one. So I would say, I would say try pair programming. I mean, if you have people that are a bit slower than others, then just let them do pair programming and switch seats often, like driver and navigator, switch all the time. And make it a, maybe a, a, to promote it, you could also add it to the daily scrum on, hey, is there anybody who needs help? No, but that's difficult because they're not going to say it in front of yeah. the rest. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't work. No, Sorry. You can monitor the board closely 
you know, if something's stuck, then um, just point out as a scrum master, but probably Olena does that already. Uh, look, guys, uh, pair programming is just another form of, of what I'm asking them to start doing. Hello. Oh, you got visitors. Yes. So there's your solution. The yes, the twins. <laughs> wow! Wow! So, it's just another form of what I, I'm I'm asking. So. They don't say we don't understand what you want. They say we don't want this. Mm -hmm. We don't need the, uh, someone else help. I'm doing this by myself. I know better. Yes. Yeah. And you're a scrum master and you're saying, great, I know you don't need help. That's why I want you to do pair programming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And therefore you can say, okay. There is no discussion. You... There's no discussion. This is just yeah. sprint three is just going to be the pair programming sprint. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. There's no oh, okay. way out. Okay. Hey, you see? No I'll democracy. No democracy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you see, uh, I will take it. It's a, it's a thick book. You can see it's the, yeah, there we go. It's the paper I remember language. So, then. <laughs> you, can, you can bring the extreme programming book or whatever to, to support your case. But, you know, there's, there's, there's only so much stretch into democracy. When I started off as a scrum master, I wanted to, I wanted to do nothing without full consent and agreement of the team. And, and I, uh, that just got, every time I, I was stepping with the, that kind of philosophy to teams that were a little bit more difficult, I got stuck because they just kept on overruling me. <clears throat> and that's when you have to set the borders really clear. Uh, like, um, hey man, um, there is no discussion about this. This is what we're going to do for that and that reason. Um, so yeah, sometimes as a scrum master, because we have so many different aspects of being a scrum master uh, related to the maturity of the team. Uh, people not accepting help is like a very M1, so very immature team behavior. And with immature teams, you need to have some kind of command and control attitude. You cannot go for democracy with immature teams. That's impossible. They need, they need to be told what the rules are. It's like telling a two-year-old kid, all right, Sure, if you want to start smoking, grab a cigarette, man. You'll find out that it's no good. That doesn't work with two-year-old kids, man. You have to wait until they're a little bit older before you give them that option. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> uh, I need to leave. Yeah, bye-bye. So. Thanks, man. Bye. Thank you. Hmm. I, I believe we, you answered my questions. Need to... Really? Make do, experiments here. <laughs> yeah, do experiments and and be a little bit strict about uh, that. There is no option for not doing the experiment because of the immaturity of the team. All right, guys, it's uh, quarter past seven. I'm I'm terribly sorry, but I have to leave as well. Um, <laughs> not true. So I I Thank enjoyed you. the game. Thank you all. Yes, Thank I enjoyed. You. Thank I, you. I, I Thank hope you have some answers. Can I help? Okay. Thank you. Of course, as always. <laughs> See you next time. See you. Bye. 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 Stay safe. Bye bye. Have a good one. Bye. А мы тут такие сидим. Я не знаю, как это. Подожди, не выходи, Юль. Не выходи. А я выхожу, да? Просто ребята, которые уже были у Роланда и на тренингах, и на Линкофе, мне просто, чтобы поднять там для импрумента, еще чего-то было тебе интересно, что могло бы быть интересно? Да, интересно. Да я не знаю, что, что улучшить. Сказать. Мне ну, интересен, это... например, сам формат, а, тем более, когда... Извини, что я тебя перебиваю, Юль, я перебил? Ну, конечно, нет. нет. Мне интересен сам, сам формат, и даже если ты приходишь на этот линкофе, и у тебя нет в голове вопроса, который ты хочешь задать, то ты можешь опосредовать...